we often talk about how to stop the spread of misinformation online. And by we, I mean me. Me often talk about how to stop the spread of misinformation online. Uh, but the word misinformation encompasses a lot of different things. It could mean saying that ivermectin cures COVID-19, that 9-11 was an inside job, that Jews secretly run the world, uh, or even a clickbait headline reading, you won't read this life-changing study about clickbait headlines, which by the way is a real headline published by Fast Company about a study which I did read that found that clickbait headlines aren't necessarily any more effective than honest headlines, and in some cases they may perform worse. But I don't wanna talk about that study today. I'm going to talk about this study. The Fingerprints of Misinformation, How Deceptive Content Differs from Reliable Sources in Terms of Cognitive Effort and Appeal to Emotions. Carlos Carrasco Fare, a researcher studying machine learning and social media at ESAD in Barcelona, points out that most research focuses on the type of misinformation that we call fake news. So when we discuss how misinformation spreads, why it goes viral, and how we can stop it, we're maybe only talking about one subset of misinformation. But in fact, he points out there are six distinct types of misinformation as described in a 2018 study that categorized 194 websites according to what kind of misinformation they put out. So first was clickbait, sources that provide generally credible content, but use exaggerated, misleading, or questionable headlines, social media descriptions, and or images. Conspiracy theory, sources that are well-known promoters of kooky conspiracy theories. Fake news, sources that entirely fabricate information, disseminate deceptive content, or grossly distort actual news reports. Hate news, sources that actively promote racism, misogyny, homophobia, and other forms of discrimination. Junk science, sources that promote pseudoscience, metaphysics, naturalistic fallacies, and other scientifically dubious claims. Rumors, sources that traffic in rumors, gossip, innuendo, and unverified claims. And then, of course, there's real legitimate news sources. So instead of examining individual misinformative articles or other forms of media, Carrasco Ferre chose these outlets that are known for distributing each types of that type of misinformation. And I'm really not a fan of this tactic because I looked at the sources he chose and for a start, they're pretty obscure. Like dcgazette.com is a blog that hasn't been updated since 2020. Judging by the content, I assume the owner died of COVID. The other problem with this tactic is that Outlets can put out a variety of kinds of misinformation. Jihadwatch.org caught my eye because it's filed under conspiracy, but come on, it's called Jihad Watch. There's got to be some, some hate stuff in there, right? Uh, and let me save you a click. Yeah, there's hate stuff in there. Uh, but this was probably the easiest way to go about all of this because of that existing database uh, that was compiled in 2018 and pre-sorted into those subsets. But yeah, honestly, I think if you really want to distinguish between these categories, you'd want to examine specific articles that fall into them, not just articles that come from sources in those categories. That's my biggest criticism here. But there are still interesting results that uh, I'd like to check out with you um, because they might have implications for how social media sites, for example, uh, might be able to sniff out various types of misinformation. Carrasco Ferre found that, for instance, fake news is 18 times more negative than legitimate news. Hate speech, as you might predict, is even more negative than legitimate sources, 30 times more negative. He also found that in general, all misinformation is less lexically diverse than legitimate information, meaning that they use uh, less of a variety of different words. This is part of what makes fake news, in particular, 13% easier to read compared to legitimate information, which may be why other studies show that the people who believe and share misinformation are more likely to have low media literacy abilities. He also found that misinformation tends to appeal more to viewers' sense of morality, with fake news focusing on morality 37% more than legitimate news, and with hate speech being 50% more focused on morality. 
This is critical information for websites like Twitter and Reddit and Facebook who might want to stop the spread of misinformation. And yes, I am being very generous by assuming that that's what these platforms want. With so much content being posted 24 hours a day, algorithms are really our best defense against misinformation. And if you can fine tune those algorithms to identify the different kinds of misinformation, they'll be way more effective. Target hate speech, not just by looking for slurs, for instance, which people can easily purposely misspell or use memes to hide, uh, but by looking for emotionally charged negative language. Look for fake news, not just by looking at hot topics like how YouTube might demonetize a video just because it's about ivermectin, uh, but also by examining the lexical diversity and ease of reading. Seriously, YouTube, please do this. I, I can use more words. I can use big words if it helps. The biggest words. Anti-disestablishmentarianism, triskaidekaphobia, pulchritudinous. I, I'll stop there. Anyway, uh, you could also use this info in your own life, even if you don't build algorithms for a living. Is a nugget of info a little too easy to parse? Does it stoke your emotions? Does it particularly make you annoyed or angry? Maybe that's a good reason to step back and reevaluate whether or not it's really true. It's always a good idea to keep your bullshit detector up to date.